Everybody looks gorgeous. Oh my heavens. Thank you. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Kentucky Derby has nothing on Sheboygan. <laughs> I want to thank my volunteers, Francoise Pete Snur. Terry Snow is back, that's good. Jackie Barbeau, we all know, and today I've called her Jackie, and I've not called her Vicky once. <laughs> and of course, Peg, not Sue, Peg. And, and Judy Clark is back. She has recovered from all of her awas. Yes. So I'm glad you're back here. Yes. And, then, and, and Ruth is here today and her mother, and so we have lots of hands helping. But when it comes time to serving, we will need lots of hands again. Grazia, I want to introduce you, and then I'll start talking about other things. Grazia Perella from Sheboygan, and she is an alderman, but she originally came from where in Italy? Yeah, I come from... Are you a, turned on? I think I am. At 82, I don't get that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I come from a small village in the South Italy, not, not too far from Naples. <laughs> Okay, Naples, yes. all right. And yeah, what not inspired you to come to the United States? Yeah, so I got married to a, a, an American citizen who is American-German. That was now 20 years ago. And then, uh, so I moved here because of, um, of him. Of him, that makes yeah. sense, sure. <laughs> sure. And then I moved here to Sheboygan because I accepted a position at Sargento. I, I, I am a food scientist, so I started working there um, in the legal department for Sargento. Now I work somewhere else. I work for Family Service Association, which is a non-profit right here in Sheboygan. Food science. Yeah. Holy moly. You right. know what's going on yeah, here. Yeah, I know. But the legal department. OK. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. All of the hats. I wanted to tell you a little story about this hat. My grandfather, my grandfather, purchased this for his wedding in 1915. Wow. <laughs> That's beautiful. Isn't that nice? Yes, it's beautiful. His initials are in here, P.S. for Paul Shavey. Wow. You can put that back on the table. <laughs> and I searched and searched through my closets for my jodhpurs. I did not find them. I bet I gave them away. I found my cowboy boots. I put them on. They are slippery shoes. I yep. had forgotten, not for no. someone of my age, no. by <laughs> any means. Today we're going to have Kentucky Hot Brown, which is a sandwich. Open face, thick bread, turkey, cheese, white sauce, and then tomato and bacon on top. And there's variations. Sometimes they add ham. Sometimes it's a cheese sauce instead of cheese slices. And the recipe, if you look it up, has put them in the oven. And that's the recipe I gave you until everything is melted and hot. Well, you know we do not have the oven space to do that. So the hot part of your Kentucky Hot Brown will simply be the white sauce poured on top. Kentucky Hot Brown Sandwich. And then we'll also have cheesy grits. And I tried grits a couple weeks ago. I had not, I cooked them according to directions. They tasted pretty good. And of course, it can replace oatmeal with a little brown sugar and cinnamon and, and cream for breakfast. But these are mixed with, what does it say on your recipe? All sorts of things. I put in pimento and green chilies and green onions and things to make it a little more than just brown and lots of cheese. It tastes really good. <laughs> and grits come from, they're called hominy grits. And hominy is some sort of corn that is processed and processed and processed again, so there's hardly any nutrition left in it. But there are calories, and our bodies need calories too. They're fillers. Yeah, it right. keeps the poor people full. Yes, we, it keeps us full. It does. So we'll make some grits. And I did make for you 
the pimento cheese spread, which is so popular in the South. I wanted y'all to have that. <laughs> the last cooking class, I was telling you of all the different kinds of whiskeys, including brandy. Boy, was I wrong. Brandy is made from grapes, not a grain. So I was wrong. Also, mm -hmm. I told you I wrapped up my favorite knife and threw it away. I was wrong about that, too. I found it in the bottom of my knife drawer. All right. Yay. So t two times wrong. <laughs> okay, let's start with the grits. I'm going to turn on the wok, put in the, uh, I'm putting in two cups of water. I'm making half a recipe. Now this wok, we hope it works well. We never know for sure. We'll put the lid on and hope it gets hot. I will stir the grits into that, and you do need to add them slowly and keep on a whisking or stirring, otherwise they're clumps. But then you can just mash the clumps too. That is not the end of the world if you have clumps. I have the grits here. I'm going to add some green chilies for flavor and appearance, and some pimento, but of course you can use your fresh red bell peppers that you have roasted and peeled or not peeled. I'm going to cut some green onions and some parsley. What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> Would you grate the rest of this cheese so we have the cheese to put into that? Let's see, is this getting warm? A little bit warm. Remember the old red West Bend walks that were so popular 20 years ago? They worked like magic. Yes, you're waving to me about something. I don't know what that means. Oh, would you like to sell them to me? Anyway, I called West Bend Outlet Store, talked to somebody live. They would check on it. I sent a text. They text back. They would get back to me in two days. I wrote a letter. Zero, zero, zero. I got no answer on anything. But if anybody has those little, the red walks that West Bend had, they get hot quickly. The electric part is separate. They work wonderfully well. And I used to have four or five of them when I was catering, but of course, foolishly, get rid of them. Yep, right. <laughs> I get it. Keep checking, you found the knife. Where did you get that knife? I've never seen one like it. I hadn't either. A friend, uh, when I was catering, uh, Mr. Volrath gave this to me. Oh. He, it was given to him, and it says um, Twin Town Cheese in Athens, Al Alima, Wisconsin. So I did not purchase cool. it. It was a gift to me, and it does Work. feel good. I bet. Yep. I'm glad I found it in the bottom of my <laughs> knife drawer. And for Chris Christmas, my kids gave to me the same shape, but when they ordered it, it was a little knife. But it was the same idea. But wasn't that nice of them? Yeah. <laughs> they know what you like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I know I complain a lot about the narrow saran, so they ordered a nice wide one for me, too. I'd rather have that than something else. Okay, the goodies that will go into the... Oh, I think I hear this. It is, okay. So, Grazia, can well, they... Well, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Can you... Um, I'll put the green onions in here, then you can chop the yes. parsley to yes. and put them in there. Yes. All right. Here we go. Boiling water. Slowly add the grits. You know, I should not have bad mouthed this wok. It's working just fine. Actually, it was pretty well. That's true. <laughs> I need to learn to keep my mouth shut a bit more. Okay, and then cooked for five or six minutes and it will get thick. Unless I put too much water in. We'll find out. Oh, I want it to boil. In five minutes I'll come back to it. This knife is really cool. It feels good, it doesn't it? It feels very good. Yep. It, the cheese and then 
we will mix it all in here. And I was surprised. It, the grits do taste good, and Terry loves them. She likes them a lot. Florida. We ate grits. My grandma used to send them to us because we get them here. Say that again so they can hear. My mother was born and raised in Florida, and when I was growing up, you couldn't get grits here, so my grandma would send us bags of grits. <laughs> and even I at the grocery store, I looked at the rice, I looked at the barley, all sorts of things. Finally, I asked a clerk, and she said, Marilyn, the grits are right below the oatmeal. <laughs> and it was. Hot, hot. So how long the grits need to boil? Five or six minutes till they start to get thick. Okay, let's say that they're thick. Because I've made two large panfuls right. already. We'll turn this off. Add some Worcestershire. Garbage. Add the chopped green chilies. Not much flavor, but they look really good in there. Do you drain them? I, no, I don't. Okay. The chopped little bitty pimentos. Some butter. And then... Let's put in all of this green stuff. Then this. Gracia, yeah, I'll put it in if you want to keep stirring. Let's uh, get a, ru that. a rubber scraper behind you instead of the whisk. Wow, it looks pretty cool. It does. Wow. And of course, the butter, right, will make it very tasty. We need that giant mirror above here, don't we? Yeah. Oh, right. You cannot see it. Sorry. It's <laughs> it beautiful. looks quite green now. Yes, green and red. Great colors together. Let's see if we can tip this a bit. So at least in the front, you can. Yeah. My mouth is watering just looking at it. And a little bit of cheese. Wow. <laughs> wow, now it is. <laughs> That's amazing. How much cheese did it call for? In the grits. Okay, that was a pound. However, amazing. I made half a recipe. <laughs> So it's kind of like cheese with a little bit of grits added to it. Wow, it looks amazing. Now, <laughs> let's have, come Beautiful. and taste this. Beautiful. And we're not going to put the eggs in now. In fact, we don't even need to put in the eggs. It yes, taste please. Right. Yeah. <laughs> eggs for taste or Pardon me? You did one. It, it, <laughs> when you bake it, it kind of makes it more easy. Yeah. So it, it is not necessary, but it, yes. Beautiful. No? Who's brave enough to try the grits already? It's excellent. It is. It's cheesy. And it's probably, I bet it's cheesy. <laughs> Do we want the cheese to melt, the whole cheese to melt, Natalie? It's, a, it's fine just the way it is. Look Beautiful. At that. Yeah, I know. No, grazia. Yes, You've never please. heard of no. cheesy grits in Italy, so. No. Nope. When grazia volunteered to be a sous chef, she probably thought I was going to mm. do Italian food. I'm doing very <laughs> American food. <laughs> That's why I like it. Great. Fantastic, great flavor. It is. Amazing. Yes. Even if there is so much cheese, but the, I think the, the, um, the green onions and the peppers balance it quite a bit. Very nice sure. balance. And of course, you could put in jalapenos if that's to your taste. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll take all of this away. Away. Yep. yep. And we'll unplug this. We'll move this down to the end where we eventually will be serving the Thank you. I'll get out of your way so you can do that. 
put the grits at the end of the table because the other, that one I'm going to use next. I'm going to do that next. Yeah. Cheesy grits out of the way. This can go. Now working with the sandwich, I'm making the white sauce for the Kentucky hot brown. Now I have made two large pots of white sauce. It's in the crock pots. But let's make white sauce. Oh, and of course we put everything away and I need the butter again. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Turn on the wok. Yep. Put in some butter. Now, I made all that white sauce yesterday. I made lots of lumps. I can do white sauce, but yesterday I made lots of lumps. Mm -hmm. So if the white sauce on your Kentucky Hot Brown is a little lumpy, you are correct. <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll find out you, today if I can You do. are a pro, right? <laughs> I need the whisk. Thank you. What do you think went wrong? I don't know. Maybe I was making too large, and I added the milk to the... I don't know. I don't know what I did wrong. And I'll leave the flour. <laughs> and we all know how to make white sauce. You've all done it lots of times. And right now it's fairly smooth. Now let's find out if it stays smooth. Maybe I have to go to a white sauce cooking class. <laughs> Guess what? That's a, a professional one. It's lumpy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you. <laughs> Think so? That could be very lucky. In the pressure of the class, yeah. To have a little more flavor, that is quite unflavored. So let's put in chicken bouillon, not a cube, but it's the sort of a liquidy thing. Marilyn, but is this the one that is also called bechamel? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Correct. She knows the French word. <laughs> And the white sauce that I made for you yesterday has a lot of black pepper and um, paprika in it to look a lot oh, more interesting. Nice. No lumps anymore, though. Yeah? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Good. We did it. All right. You and did that's it. it. The white sauce. Pretty no, nice. I, when I was researching this, I assumed that the white sauce would have would be brown, because if you know, if you use some kitchen bouquet or something, it turns brown, but it, it's just white sauce, but it's still called a Kentucky hot brown. Hmm. And they can choose to name it whatever they want. That's right. Okay, then we can take all of Very this nice. away, and then you can bring down the, yes, so we have some room. Any questions about the cheesy grits or the white sauce? And I did purchase way too much turkey. So half of the turkey is in the freezer that will be used for the August class, which will be state fair. Because I looked up foods of other state fairs, Wisconsin, it's cream puffs. Definitely yeah, will do cream puffs. <laughs> Minnesota is the biggest producer of turkeys in the United States. Really? And they specialize in turkey sandwiches, so that's something we'll have. And then I thought, we need something else for the August class. I was just on a roll to do menus. South Carolina, their specialty at their state fair, Greek salad. Wow. <laughs> and most of the states also have lots and lots of deep fried everything. Yeah. We're not going to deep fry. That's too dicey. I'm not going to deep fry. Yeah. Somebody has a question. Oh, yes, a question. Go ahead. No? 
Yes, go ahead. Mm. Gouda. Oh, Gouda would be Gouda. Yes. I bet. Sure. Right. Yep. And they have some grit and shrimp dishes. I would eat that in the panhandle. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. It was cooked shrimp on a bed of grits? Okay. Cheesy grits. Yes. Cheesy grits. Yes. Well, shrimp. they... Nothing wrong with that. Right. <laughs> you know, we eat oatmeal for breakfast. But more often than oatmeal for breakfast, we eat oatmeal cookies, right? <laughs> well, as kids, we ate lots of oatmeal. For Marilyn's recipe for the Kentucky Hot Brown, did, did, when you researched this, was this something that they served there, or what is the history of the sandwich? It, it's throughout the state. It's a, just a... Kentucky sandwich, okay. kind of like Bratwurst for yeah, okay. Wisconsin, which I had never heard of until we moved here in 1965. And it was just from northern Wisconsin. But wow, we love that Bratwurst. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make the mixture for the pecan pie. In fact, if you'll put it in, I'll just read the instructions for you. Yes. Okay. A cup of sugar. We don't have the sugar. We'll pretend there's a cup of sugar in there. All right. And, but, and sugar. Sugar. And corn syrup. I chose the dark. I. What do you think this is? Four cups. It's two tablespoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Four cups. So we'll need half a cup. I mean one cup. Should I stir it or yep. wait? Two. Okay. And of course you can use white corn syrup. And of course you don't measure, right? Well, we know that... We're cooks, and we know half of this will be one cup. Okay. <laughs> and we put in some vanilla. Does the food scientist measure when you <laughs> Yeah, do you measure? I'll let you do. Do you? I do. Yeah. Sorry. Right. I do. We're not as confident as Mary. Absolutely. You know, my sister in Madison graduated from college with, a, with honors, with a double degree in chemistry and physics, for God's sake. So needless to say, when she cooks, it's very precise. And the butter. Did we leave? Is the butter still here somewhere? No, that's shortening for the pie crust. That's all right. We put some butter in there and a little bit of salt in there and some bourbon. Hey. Oh, can I put the bourbon? Oh, yeah, put the bourbon. I love the bourbon. Oh, do you? Okay. How much bourbon? How about that one? A little more. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. That is my very nice. And then to make a chocolate, because this would simply be pecan pie, grate some of this in there or melt it and pour it in there. Or if you're hard up, put some cocoa powder in there or some syrup. Any of those will work to make the pecan pie chocolate. Wow, this smells so very good. Pretend that. Yes, chocolate. And then it needs... Is it sweet chocolate? Unsweetened. The unsweetened. And if you only have sweet, that's all right, too. This is such a sweet pie, a little bit more won't make a difference. <laughs> Use what you have at home. And then eggs. And, and, and Terry brought me brown eggs. <laughs> How perfect. I knew, I knew. <laughs> the rubber eggs. Well, you expect it at every class, right? <laughs> God. <laughs> Wow, that's... Wow. Now I'll make a crust. (laughs) Thank you. And you all know how to make a pie crust. And the only reason I'm doing that is to show you how my mother would fold it. I know, I know. The the pre-purchase or even the nut crust that's already made... Okay, I know, it smells very good. That's a bourbon. (laughs) Oh, I said by the time I get the the, the better, it'll be all right. 
And I should have graded it, but I don't know where the grader is, so I'll just work it in with my hands. So, Marilyn, you use Crisco, right? I, but yeah. Could you use butter as well? Sure, you could, or lard. You or prefer bacon the Crisco? Drippings. What? You prefer the Crisco? Yeah. It's whatever it's I have in the house. Sometimes I use bacon drippings, sometimes I use lard, wow. sometimes butter, whatever happens to be in the refrigerator. Yes. Yeah. Do they still sell lard, or is that known as Crisco now? No, no. Lard is lard, and it's in the meat department. And Crisco is a vegetable. Right. Okay, yeah. so in what grocery store in the meat department have you seen it? At all of them? Crisco. No, really? Yeah. I never... Yeah. Okay, it doesn't take long to do that one cup of butter in there. Did we put vanilla into the pecan pie? We did. Okay. All right. You did. Okay. Then I'll need about, I don't know, half of this, of, or almost full of just water. Mother made a lot of pies. I'll bet. Yeah, and they would buy the apples with the bruises. Or Shall I pour? About half. That's good. Let me mix that and see what happens. I'll need more. And it doesn't need to be warm, right? Just no. regular water. Some I mean, people cold. say it should be ice water oh. that keeps the fat from melting. But mm. the nice thing about the fat melting, it holds together real well. Right. Okay, a little bit more. And probably all of that. Do you do do you always do it by hand or you use a blender as well or um... I always do pie crust by hand. Does, does everybody do pie crust by hand if they do from scratch? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You get the feel of it. You want to put your hands in there and feel yeah. that? Yeah, very nice and soft. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you don't need more water. I think I do. Yeah. There's flour on the bottom that is not mixed. Okay, let's see if that works. Oh, I think so. Now, the crust for the pecan pies, cupcakes that I made, instead of making pies and cutting them into servings for 40 people, I made pecan pie cupcakes. That crust, I used flour, butter, and sugar. So it's a little sweeter crust. Nice. And also it's more brown, right? Yeah. And I need, I don't need that, but I do need flour. Coming up. Yep. Thank you. And it is easier to roll it on a piece of cloth. That's the only reason I use it. And I use it a few times, and then it goes in the washing machine and the dryer. Nice. That I've never seen. Dish towel, yes. Yes, absolutely. Hmm. Never seen that. And I'm making a large crust simply because it's much easier to roll out and get into the pan. Because usually a crust for this size only needs two cups of flour, but I'm doing three. Okay. Now we have, and I put the stocking on here because it makes it easier to roll. I do have this one if we need it. <laughs> That's to exercise. Yes. And then this gadget, I'm wondering from where I got this. It works pretty well, too. Nice. A print shop? Yeah, that's what I'm Back in the day, maybe 10, 15 years ago, I bought one just like that. However, it was pampered chef's with plastic. Yep. And it comes in handy for all kinds of odds and ends. Yes. Yep. Not really crust, but yep. anything right. else. Yeah. Rolling you out. flatten something. Yeah. The, yeah. Pe the pizza dough. Right, anything. Right, yep. right, right, right. Yeah, you're right, pampered chef. And the short end to get into the yep. little area. Yep. yep. Why do you use a cloth? 
it's it does it doesn't stick. That's all. What was that question about the lard? What was that question? Why do I use the cloth? Oh, okay. Because it doesn't stick. And why do I use a cloth here? Because it doesn't stick. Nice. Yep. It's it's called a sock for ro rolling bin. <laughs> you could, you could. <laughs> but if it's 100% cotton, and most of them are polyester, right? So, Marilyn, this one, uh, this doll doesn't need to be refrigerated. No. Because sometimes they do, right? To refrigerate them for a while before. Um, Usually bread dough and things sometimes. Pizza mm, dough, for mm, sure. Mm, mm, but but not, think, not pie crust. Right, right. Okay. Not that I know of, but you could. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't hurt anything to mm -hmm. refrigerate it. And Mother's was so smooth. Give me the big one. Let's see. Hey, voila. Oh, this does work nicely. Oh, yeah. No, this one does not have a sock. It doesn't need it. That would be a long sock, wouldn't it? That's and there's fun. cracks in it, and there always is. You know that. It might help if you weren't on the crease of the table. Right. I bet you're right, Anne. If I weren't rolling on the crease of the table. Good thinking. Thank you. I don't know if it is needed yet. Okay. <laughs> well, what I wanted to show you is, you know, the new way is put this onto your rolling pin and then roll it onto the pie plate. I've tried a number of times and it's always wonky. So I do the way my mother did. Well, hers didn't break apart like that. She, in quarters, and you gently put it in there, unfold it without all the cracks. You were taught that in cooking class. To do the, the folding. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, you know, when I graduated from high school in 1959, yep. Yeah, and we girls all had to take home ec. All right. Only home ec. The boys all <coughs> had to take shop. Yep, right. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it was. Well, I think I told you the story of driving our Chevy and the tappets would stick and the, so at, at a stop sign, which I didn't know what tappets were. But Dad told me or showed me how to lift the hood jiggle something and then the tappets would be unstuck. Mm -hmm. Mechanics must know what tappets are. I don't. And then I would close the hood and get back in the car and drive. Well, I kind of liked doing that out in traffic. <laughs> this, this dumb little girl is lifting the hood and she's doing, and then the car starts again. <laughs> and it happened fairly regularly. <laughs> Okay, that's it. I'm not working anymore on this baby. <laughs> that is exactly, and, and you know, if you work on it patiently, you get a beautiful pie crust. Sorry, I cannot resist. Good for you, that's the scientist who fix it. <laughs> And how do we want it around, around the, the rim? Well, if, we, if it were working nicely, mm -hmm. we would do this. Oh, right, the famous thing, yeah, yeah. yes. With your fingers. Yeah. Oh, that looks very nice. <laughs> yes, yeah. Good work. <laughs> and of course, and then you lift it up and cut the edges off with a knife. And, 
and then cinnamon sugar, and they go in the oven? Oh, yes. Mm. Yeah, we know that. My mouth is watering already. Uh. Okay. Let's put this aside. Put this aside. But that's not true this way, huh? (laughs) Did I forget anything? Oh, the lily cocktail. Did I talk about the lily cocktail? Okay. Thank heavens you're there. There's the mint julep, which is kind of harsh. And I didn't think we should be drinking that much, what, vodka or gin or whatever it is. So we did the lily. Jane at the front desk loves Kentucky Derby. She's been there a few times. And she has a Kentucky Derby party often. And she mentioned to me the other beverage, the lily, which is simply cranberry juice mixed with lemonade or limeade or 7-Up. But it always has a blackberry or two in the glass. And then, of course, optional, you can add vodka to it or an orange liqueur of some sort, the Grand Marnier or the Cointreau. And so there's a little bit of Cointreau left there. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Thank you.